Hey there, welcome to Expansive Astrology Academy, week three, Virgo season, week three. Yay. Uh, <laughs> this week is called Reflection and Review. Are you ready? Last week, we began to explore how we can find refuge within ourselves in the here and now. And this week, we're working with finding ways, finding new ways to work with what is present, to find, to, to get creative and find new ways to work with what's present um, in order to be able to find our life's work, <laughs> our sole purpose within the mundane day to day by truly being with the day to day. So if, um, <laughs> if last week was a little hard for you, if experiencing mindfulness is, is a challenge for you, we're not done yet, baby. <laughs> so good luck. We're still, we're still really practicing that and working with that. Uh, and it's a lifelong practice. There's a reason we use the word practice when we're talking about things like yoga and mindfulness. Um, it's a practice. Definitely. You, you, uh, it takes work. It takes work and refining. So the affirmation for this week comes from, as far as I know, the first time I heard this was from yoga practice. This, this idea or this phrase, root to rise. I root to rise. One of Virgo's superpowers is its ability to analyze and its ability to honor and be really jazzed by routine. So we're honoring that and tapping into that with a mantra of I root to rise. We're affirming that I root to rise to remind us that like tending to my roots, tending to where my feet are right now, is the best way for me to grow and rise and like step into my potential. So again, one of Virgo's superpowers is its ability, is its ability to analyze. So we're going to really tap in with that and hone, hone in on that this season. Virgo is here to live life fully, to analyze and understand it, its experiences and to use that understanding and that knowledge to help in some way. Virgo is also an excellent and meticulous caretaker. Virgo can also be neurotic. <laughs> so here's your reminder that having unrealistic expectations for ourselves is not caretaking. Step into the role of caretaker for yourself. And we're going to experiment embracing some meticulous caretaking of ourselves and see how that goes. So hopefully you've been continuing to implement your sacred six from week one, those, those six routines or habits that you consider to be so sacred and important that you return to them every single stinking day. And let's turn that up a notch and really see the ways that very careful caretaking and tending to our roots can help us to rise, which is our mantra for this week, I root to rise. It's a reminder that it all starts with where we are. The intention is like when we use that phrase root to rise in yoga, like it's intended to bring your mind back down into your feet as you stand up tall and firm because it all starts with your feet and where you are grounded. The element, the element of earth encompasses all things material and earthly, <laughs> all things earthly. The way we make and spend our money, the way we spend our time, the way we treat our bodies, our physical possessions, our homes, our work. That's all earth element. That's all the suit of pentacles. We're taking a really deep look at all of those things this week. And by doing this, by zooming into the day-to-day, -day, we develop a much more solid sense of purpose. I wonder if you can relate to feeling 
lost <laughs> or stuck or uh, like you're just not meeting your potential. And, and we can get really caught up in that and really distraught by that. And when we think of our futures and where we would like to go and where we are now, that can be hella overwhelming and we, we can get really stuck in the how. Like, how do I get there? I'm not there. Oh my God, is it ever gonna happen for me? And the answer is to bring it, to zoom it back in, bring it back to, to, the, to the day, today. What can you do today? So by zooming into the day to day is how we will develop a more solid sense of, of purpose. Uh, there's construction going on next door. So if you hear, I hope you can't hear the banging, um, but I apologize if you can. I mentioned in week one, that Virgo sometimes has a really difficulty know has difficulty knowing how or when to zoom in and focus on like get really detail oriented or to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. This week we're 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 zooming in. We're analyzing our roots. We're analyzing how we show up in the day to day. And we're gonna work on getting really intentional with how we're spending our time. So the some alternative affirmations repeat after me i really want you to embrace these things as truth in your life i am divinely compensated when i take care of myself caring for myself in the here and now is the most important thing i can do believe that adopt that embrace that make these ideas pillars that you live by these are codes that are embedded into your system. If you are a simulation, <laughs> if you are a video game to an alien, I want you to run it through your software coding, those things that you are divinely compensated when you take care of yourself and that caring for yourself in the here and now is the most important thing you can possibly do. Those are just, uh, how that's just how you operate that's just how you run it's in your os upgrade your operating system <laughs> i am divinely compensated when i take care of myself what does divinely compensated mean right it means that you trust that the best thing you can do for yourself is taking care of yourself and that you know it all begins from there and that you value caring for yourself you know that caring for yourself is a valuable use of your time and that the universe will reward you or compensate you for doing so in a divine way. Whether that means physical money, a paycheck, and a raise, or whether that means more energy to make more money or more creativity to think of new ways to feel good. You don't, we don't know how divine compensation will look but you just know that you will be divinely compensated somehow for treating yourself with care because you know that it is valuable and that you will, there's like a value exchange there. Again, whether that's physical money or more energy or more creativity or uh, more spaciousness. So trust, I hope that makes sense. Trust that you will be divinely compensated for doing this kind of work. Yes. So step one, I'm digging the shawl today. I feel like, um, I feel like an old lady in a cottage or something with the bun and the shawl. Sorry, sorry, I'm distracted. Um, <laughs> sorry. Step one is objective evaluation. It's time for your review. It's time to sit down with your internal board of directors and have your quarterly evaluation. We're having a chat with our inner president of the board and the our inner secretaries there, the treasurer, the person in charge of public relations, human resources, etc. The whole board is sitting down for your quarterly evaluation. But first, let me introduce you to something called non-judgmental stance. This is a DBT skill that helps us, that it helps us to ad ad adopt true objectivity, which helps set us up for radical acceptance, which we'll talk about later, another DBT skill. 
So what is non-judgmental stance? I mean, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It, it's letting go of any judgments of the things that you notice. This means noticing what is happening and what exists without placing any judgments, without evaluating the thing at all. No evaluation, just observation, which is not what our brain wants to do. Our brain is created to make judgments. Our brain is brilliant at assessing things, analyzing things. This and learning how to just observe without that evaluation, evaluative piece um, gives us an opportunity to observe things in a new and different way. This is a practice of, it's a practice, emphasis on the word practice. It's a practice of withholding judgments about what a thing means and simply just observing it, noting it, letting it be what it is. So while we're having this board of directors meeting and doing our review of the state of your life and how you're showing up, do so with great care. Do you, do, you, do you find that you're not sticking to a morning routine? That doesn't have to mean anything, right? We, we might say like, gosh, I haven't been sticking with my sacred six. I haven't been sticking with my morning routine or whatever. So that means I'm lazy and that means I'm not committed and that means it's all wrong or I'll never change. No, 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 no. Get rid of that evaluative piece. It doesn't mean anything. Just let it be what it is. Just let it be what it is. It doesn't have to mean anything. Do you self-medicate with food or alcohol or anything else? That doesn't have to mean anything. Do you find yourself arguing in your partnership a lot more than usual? Just observe what is happening and don't attach any meaning to it. That's what it means to have a non-judgmental stance. Yeah, just review, just reflect, just look. Don't get too caught up on placing any meaning on it. And, and um, having a non-judgmental stance can really help <laughs> in like all areas of life. Being really aware of where you are placing meaning on a thing and being aware that that's just, that's just your brain. It doesn't have to, just because your brain says it doesn't mean it's true. Hate to break it to your brain, but you don't know everything. Now, another note before we move on, I want you to be very aware of toxic productivity. Now, this, this image of a board of directors meeting and a quarterly eval can sound very cold and um, very capitalist. <laughs> this is a soul-centered board of directors meeting, right? They're, <laughs> they're not in business suits, unless that resonates for you, but um, they're non-judgmental and, and they are very aware of toxic productivity and this board of directors is not all about that. That attitude, toxic productivity is that, that attitude that we must be doing something productive in order for our time to be worth it or well spent. And it's all too common in our culture. And I just want you to be very aware of your relationship with productivity and what that means before we move forward. Remember that a part of the work of this season, the work of Virgo in general lies in <clears throat> balancing and adjusting our standards for ourselves. We have to balance work and pleasure in order to be healthy, both work and pleasure. Both are important and technically both are productive, but we don't always see it that way. So check the, check the product, ch toxic productivity at the door as you're doing this little evaluation of, your, of yourself in your life, and then we can proceed. I briefly mentioned this earlier this season, this phrase of how you do one thing is how you do everything. Now, how does that land for you when I say that? How you do one thing is how you do everything. I remember when I first heard it and I immediately thought of the worst, most 
careless, most lazy moments that I, that I have, the times I've half-assed things or neglected important things or flew by the seat of my pants, uh, the times I've been flighty or careless. Cringe. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So how are you showing up? How would you like to be showing up? If that's true, how do you do things? And do you need to adjust that? And do you need to adjust the standards that you've set for yourself in terms of that? Let's find out. Let's take a closer look. So you're going to account for all areas of your life. Ready? We're accounting for your time and how you treat time, your body, including how you feed yourself and how you rest and how you embrace pleasure. Explore, evaluate, chat with your board of directors about how you treat your work. Are you trudging through the work? Do you experience bad shift after bad shift after bad shift after bad shift? What does that mean in terms of how you're showing up to your life? What about your play? Do you play? Do you have hobbies? Do you prioritize enjoyment and um, doing things for the sake of doing them? Playing. Evaluate your cognitive health. Do you read? Do you um, challenge your brain? Do you create things? Do you learn things for fun? Do you read for fun? How do you embrace or what's your relationship like with your cognitive health? What's your relationship like with your spiritual health, including things like resting and taking breaks and or praying or um, reading a Bible or, or books that help you connect to your spiritual health more? It's important, no matter what, what that looks like for you, because it'll look all of this will look different for everybody. Um, and how do you tend to your spiritual health? How do you tend to your finances? Do you ignore, do you avoid paying bills? Do you avoid looking at uh, your bank statements? Do you ignore things? Do you ignore problems when it comes to your finances? And if that's the case, and if it's true that how you do one thing is how you do everything, what does that mean? What about your social relationships? Do you, Make sure that you're getting enough social interaction with others, which will look different for everybody. So balancing both reaching out and being with others and um, taking alone time. What does your inner board of directors have to say about, about that, your social relationships? So those are just some of the categories that I could think of that, um, feel pretty all encompassing to me. And there might be other categories that feel really important to you. Maybe um, you separate your family relationships from your social relationships, evaluate how you're showing up in your family relationships. Maybe your sexual health is um, a category all on its own. All, it's your, it's your quarterly evaluation. Explore all aspects of how you're running business. And use, use the, the medicine of Virgo and Virgo's brilliant ability to analyze and review and reflect in order to do this. That's step one. Careful, thorough review. Step two is to brainstorm ideas for a holistic self-care plan. Routines and a plan, like we're, we're coming up with a plan, we're brainstorming ideas to approach all of these aspects of your life in, in new, new ways. Using Virgo's brilliant brain, your brilliant brain to help you rethink and restructure how you do these things using all the categories from above, break it down into subcategories of daily, weekly, monthly. We're gonna look at establishing 
self-care tactics, self-care activities, self-care tools in each and every category on a regular basis. So, so consider for yourself, how can you commit to doing for, or like what can you commit to doing for yourself that will be supportive of your physical health on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis? <clears throat> how can you caretake your work life on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis? What do you need to do in terms of your financial health on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis? Your relationships, your social health, daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. Spiritual health, what are you going to do daily, weekly, monthly? And there's um, kind of a, a chart or a breakdown of this in the PDF that you can find. Is it meticulous? Yes, <laughs> which is kind of the point. We're really zooming in this week, getting creative, getting really serious about taking care of ourselves. <clears throat> Commit to it like it's your full-time job because it is. <laughs> now, I'm calling this a self-care plan and unlike what we might like to think, <laughs> It isn't all bubble baths and journaling and dance parties in your underwear. This is about things like taking your medications, calling the doctor, submitting your paperwork, voting, checking your bank account, <laughs> all the other horrible, boring, unfun things that come with life on earth as an adult human being. And as you're creating this like self-care brainstorm, in all of these categories, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, I want you to shift in, from an attitude of, like this isn't a to-do list. This isn't, um, it's meticulous. And instead of considering it your to-dos and the things that you have to do, uh, shift into an attitude of these are things that you get to do. I get to take a shower. If you're anything like me, showers are boring sometimes. And they take a lot of work and your hair's wet afterwards and it's cold and annoying. And sometimes showering, something as simple as showering can really feel like a to-do. I'm like, I don't wanna do it. You have to kind of give yourself a pep talk. <laughs> Instead of, <laughs> instead of considering that a have to or a to do, um, reframe it to a I get to. I get to meal prep. I get to go to work. I get to look at my budget today. Now, part of this too, part of this holistic self-care plan brainstorm sesh means throwing away anything from step one from your from your review with your board of directors or throwing away anything that isn't helpful what do you do on a daily weekly and monthly basis in these different categories that is isn't serving you and isn't helping you anymore can you get more creative get more careful get more meticulous with those things Now, step three is turning that, that self-care brainstorm dump into realistic, established routines. Now you, we already have routines. Whether they're intentional and helpful or not, they're there. And hopefully you've started to really non-judgmentally be be, become aware of what your routines are and how they exist for you already. Whether your routine is that you wake up every morning and, and wash your face and do your skincare and, and then uh, do 20 minutes of mindful breathing and 45 minutes of yoga and you journal and make tea. Whether that's your routine, which sounds lovely, right? And spacious and very careful. Whether that's your routine or your routine is to sleep through your alarms and wake up in a panic and um, 
barely have time to remember deodorant before you rush out the door. And then you get home from work and um, scrounge up some food that you don't feel excited about and um, escape into Netflix or, you know, the couch or whatever. Whether your routines are curated and careful or haphazard and uncareful, unhelpful. <laughs> however they exist, they do exist, right? So get real about that. I'm sure you can hear all that banging. I am so sorry. Um, there's a ton of research out there in favor of careful routines. Some say that having routines helps manage symptoms of anxiety or bipolar disorder or insomnia and ADHD. Routine has also been found to help build confidence over time and help with stress management because you're getting things done well. You're taking care of yourself on a regular basis, which helps to increase your sense of uh, cap um, cap um, yeah, helps increase your confidence and your sense of like capability. I'm capable of really caring for myself. Routines also help provide some predictability in a very unpredictable world. <laughs> this is especially important for creative people or anxious people who often struggle to make time for things like creativity. If you can implement creativity into your routines, problem solved. So this third step does not involve holding ourselves to a perfectionist standard where you're looking at that, that self-care brain dump that we did in step two and trying to fit it all into routines. Perfect, rigid, military-like militant routines are not empowered or helpful usually maybe they are for you and if that's the case you'll know that yeah so this is not about holding ourselves to perfectionist standards and take this very seriously get really serious like not militant not critical don't become an asshole to yourself about your routines and take this very seriously experiment with establishing routines for yourself and see if it makes a difference in how you feel how you sleep how embodied and aligned you feel, your relationship with yourself, right? So some ways to ensure success and set, up, set yourself up for success in establishing routine would be um, having realistic expectations for yourself. I'm going to keep mentioning this during Virgo. <laughs> We're going to work a lot more on perfectionism next week. Um, and in the meantime, Make sure, just make sure that you're setting up, like having realistic expectations for what your routines are going to look like. Uh, another way to like set yourself up for success is to really don't be afraid to celebrate when you do well. And don't be shy about it either. Celebrate when you do well. Celebrate when you, when you check all of your get to's off of your list. Celebrate when you, uh, knock it out of the park celebrate when you finish something and when you're when you're rocking it really celebrate and, and pep yourself up be your own cheerleader shifting the narrative from i have to do this or these are my to do's to something more empowering and exciting like these are my get to's these are the things i get to do can, can just kind of help. It's like a little narrative hack. It's like a little brain hack. Shifting from, I have to do these things to I get to do these things. Now, one, there are a million different, you, you can look on Pinterest, you can look on YouTube, you can ask your friends like what their schedules look like or what their routines look like. You can get tons of info, like inspo, inspo in those places. Um, and something that I've seen a lot and that has really worked for me is block scheduling, which is where instead of 
um, instead of scheduling every day according to that day's specific list of get tos, you're you're chunking up your days a little more. So whether that's like um, instead of saying I'm going to shower at eight thirty and then eat breakfast and then do yoga and then go to work and then do chores, um, you'll you'll break it up into more like I have self care time in the mornings and then work time in the afternoons and then chore time in the evenings or Tuesday evenings or chore time or um, scheduling or, or breaking your schedule up into blocks of time. And then you get as much done during that block of time as, as you can or as feels possible or necessary for you. And then once that block of time is over, you shift into the next thing. Um, I've had a lot of success with that personally. Another thing that has been really helpful for me is to have what I call an admin day. So like an administrative day where that's the day that I take care of things like sending the emails, making the phone calls, um, paying the bills, doing the paperwork. Uh, admin day would include finishing the laundry, making sure the floors are vacuumed, like all, all of that kind of thing. It's like um, housekeeping day, kind of in a way. And then for the rest of the week, I save those things for admin day. I've had a lot of success with that. Um, some people that I've worked with or some people that I know hate that idea and it overwhelms them to save everything for one day. So a lot of people will add to their block schedule 30 minutes before bed to kind of tie up those sorts of loose ends rather than saving it all for one day a week, right? Figure out what works best for you. And I highly recommend scheduling in some admin time. That way you can put things like save the worries for your admin time, <laughs> right? Um, you can know that it's going to come up and that you're going to follow through with it. And until then, you're not going to worry about the phone call that needs to be returned. It can really help. Now, um, that leads into my next little tip, which is just, if you need to, schedule time to worry. <laughs> schedule time to be anxious, whether that's during like a daily journaling practice or taking a moment before you hop into bed to like breathe and like be with the things that are important to you and that are concerning to you and present on your mind. Try to like w whenever it is in your, or whether it, you save it for your weekly, bi-weekly, monthly therapy appointment, like whatever that looks like for you. If you schedule in time to be anxious or schedule in time to worry, you can kind of save it for then when it comes up as you're going about your day. Um, and giving yourself permission to be with those worries and be with those concerns and be with those things that are really important to you is important rather than just shutting it away. Uh, looking at those things is very important. And I think there's a lot of value in giving yourself permission to look at those things later on a regular basis. For me, um, I have, I wish I brought them in here. I have a little bag of Guatemalan worry dolls that my fiance bought for me. And they're handmade, really beautiful, little tiny like fabric dolls. And there's 10 of them in this little bag and I pull them all out before bed. And um, I give one of my concerns to each of those dolls and I thank those dolls, put them back in their bag, tie it up. And that helps me to like be present with what is on my mind and also like shut it away. It can be really, really helpful. I highly recommend it. Another tip I have is to use fun names in your block scheduling, use fun names for your routines um, that help you get excited for it. So instead of just like, I don't know, workout routine or morning routine or bedtime routine, like name them something fun. What I have in my calendar is my goddess morning routine. <laughs> and I use like, the, the little star emojis and all the fun things. And um, I have a chunk of time every morning that I call my goddess morning routine where I get up. And that includes things like feeding the animals and feeding myself and some brushing my teeth and some boring stuff. And also pulling a tarot card and um, journaling and dressing myself. 
And when I call that a goddess morning routine, it kind of just sets the tone for the routine. It sets the tone for what I'm about to engage in and, and do. And if I call it a goddess morning routine, even as I'm making the oatmeal that I ate for the last 76 days in a row, <laughs> it helps me feel uh, like a goddess about it. So whatever resonates for you, um, I encourage you to, to name these routines something fun and something that speaks to your soul, something that really resonates to you and gets you excited to engage in these things. Now, again, this is the repeating reminder throughout all of Virgo season. Balance, meeting your expectations with adjusting your expectations. <laughs> know when to do both. Uh, you're not, this is, you're not cutting yourself so much slack that nothing ever gets done, but actively choosing to be proud of yourself at the end of each and every day, no matter what that day looked like. So even if you do fall short of your expectations, you're not necessarily letting yourself off the hook, but you're choosing to be proud of yourself regardless. At the end of the day, you're choosing to, uh, to experience pride and thankfulness, gratitude for how you showed up that day. Yeah. The whole umbrella goal of this work is to reach our goals sooner. To tend to our roots so that we can rise up into our power, into our potential and soar with it. And none of that requires or includes being an asshole to yourself and holding yourself to a perfectionist standard. Not at all. And we'll have much more on perfectionism, imposter syndrome, um, et cetera, next week. So in the meantime, hang in and be gentle. In the meantime, the homework for this week is to review the state of your life right now, non-judgmentally. Just review, just explore, and then get creative, have fun, and create some routines. You can check the PDF for a sample self-care plan. Um, this is the layout of the self-care plan that was actually required of me um, for the entire two and a half years that I was in graduate school to become a counselor. Uh, they required that we updated this very meticulous self-care plan every single semester because they wanted to make sure that they were training counselors who engaged in self-care and training counselors that took care of themselves. Cause we all know the better we take care of ourselves, the more capable we are to show up for the rest of the world, for the rest of our lives. Okay. So, so that's the work for this week. Um, good luck. Definitely do not hesitate ever. Don't hesitate to let me know what stands out to you or how this lands for you. Don't hesitate to let me know if you have any creative ideas when it comes to creating a really holistic self-care routine, self-care plan. Um, let me know what comes up for you. Let me know what comes up for you as you review the state of your life. Yeah? Yeah? All right. All right. I think that's it. So take extra, extra good care of yourself, right? Virgo wants you to. <laughs> Tis the season, baby. All right. I will see you next time. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up. Um, take care. Thanks so much for being here. I really hope this served. Bye.